to you first. Um, your startup is called Urbane. Um, I love the idea, but for those who aren't sure of what Urbane is exactly, why don't you give us your pitch? Absolutely. So in very simple terms, what we're doing is we're taking apart ordinary city maps where typically when you look at Google Maps, you see names of places and for Las Vegas, for instance, Henderson, Summerlin, all these places right. where okay, I know where it is, but what does that really mean? So I've taken actually some images here and giving the Bay Area as an example. This is, take a look at an ordinary map where you have Dublin, Oakland, San Francisco, and that doesn't really mean that much. Mm -hmm. So what we've done is we've given all of these places contextual meaning. So in other words, the social descriptions, the architecture, whatever people first think of when they think of a name of a city, a name of a place, uh, we've been creating new maps that display this kind of information. So and give us an example of like something in San Francisco where it would probably be woolly to a tourist, but it would give them a far better idea if, if they were looking at it in Urbane. I think for San Francisco, there are way too many <laughs> <laughs> That's true. potential examples, but most people don't realize when they first go in how there's fog on one side of the city and there's absolutely no fog on one side of the, of the other. So those kinds of descriptions, they're hard to explain when you try and simply put, put the name in place, right? Very true, Unless you very call true. it Foggy Bottom, you're not really <laughs> sure it's foggy. Yeah, yeah. So we found that a lot of people from real estate, where they're looking for social trends, where should I put my business if I'm building a, a hipster shop? Where would those hipsters <laughs> be? To folks who are relocating and they're saying, I'm a family person. I've heard about Summerlin, that's a very family friendly place. Maybe I should move there. This is a great idea. So you're saying that these these kind of new names for these areas are actually crowdsourced as well? So yeah, how, yeah. how does that work? So people have been emailing us. We actually initially create a base map of our own, given some research that my teammate Trevor, who's in the audience here, and I, we again do the research. And then usually once we do a baseline, we have all these folks that email us saying, that's not right, or I can do a better map. Or they even suggest a new city for us to do. That's so it's, super cool. And we want to take that to a more interactive level where we want people to contribute without us even touching any of the data, for instance. So it would be truly kind of created by the community that obviously know their area best and, and are willing to kind of lend that knowledge to, to help people have a better experience when they get to town, right? That's right. And for the first part, we have just been selling prints and physical things of these maps. And that is really like a cool. A tote bag of Seattle, for instance. What better <laughs> way to show your pride for Seattle by wearing a tote bag that not just puts in neighborhood names. How many posters have we seen, right? They're, they're just full of place names, but they don't actually describe the descriptions below of what a city actually is. Right, so for example, I'm seeing here, it says the magical food forest in one of the sections of Seattle, which I think is really so it's, cool. It's clearly known for food and for magical varieties of food. <laughs> awesome, so congratulations on going through the progression labs. Um, so what's the next step for Urbane? At this point, it is developing that new technological layer. Mm -hmm. I think we've been selling these posters and prints pretty consistently, but we know that that's not going to be, we're not an art project. Right. I mean, that's not the end goal. It's a great way to spread the word about what we are, mm -hmm. but we do want to make this a more interactive process, like I mentioned before. Great. So we're hoping to do that right here in Vegas. Awesome. Well, if people want to find out more about Urbane, what's the easiest way for them to do that or to get in contact with you? They can go to mapurbane.com, mm -hmm. which is our website, and you can click on our About Us page. We have a nice little picture of our team in front of the, the Vegas sign, which the other team, Macho, <laughs> one of the photographers, took for us. So we're we're grateful and it's, it's great to be here. I love it, thank you. Now, before I let you go, um, I am gonna assign you as the official fortune picker of the night. Ooh. So I am <laughs> going to deal. present to you a pile of fortune cookies. I'd okay. like you to pick a random one okay. and pick it out, but don't open it. And we're gonna have our official fortune cookie bearer come and take that off you. Right. <laughs> Drum roll. All right, where's our fortune cookie bearer? Oh. It's <laughs> Thank you, Dylan. <laughs> Next up, we have Danny, and he's from Macho. And I hear that you're actually trying to make it a little bit easier for people to travel around the place and find out all the different options for travel. So when, why don't you tell us more about Macho? Great. So um, I'm one of the co-founders here, um, and we're aiming to improve the way people travel, plan travel. Um, and so the premise came from the fact that we think that the current process is broken. So to sort of paint a picture for you, um, 
my beautiful girlfriend is sitting in the front row. Aww. She was in uh, a Woo! client site uh, at Boston earlier this week. She came from her apartment in New York City. Right. So if you think about the steps she took to actually plan travel, she probably went to Expedia, Orbitz, different flight companies, Amtrak.com, the various bus companies. Mm -hmm. After selecting that one trip, she had to figure out how to get to that transit hub. Once she got to Boston, she had to figure out how to get to the destination. That is exhausting. So like, by that time, exhausting. she's looked at 20, 30 websites. She she probably has no idea uh, how much the entire trip cost or how long it uh, ended up taking. Or, um, and, and frankly, she probably didn't even select the most uh, optimal trip. Right. Um, so this is a problem. This is where Macho comes in. Um, and we're trying to revolutionize the way people plan travel. So if you think about, let's say, uh, what OpenTable did to restaurants, okay. what Uber did to cars, mm -hmm. what uh, Kickstarter did to funding, what they did is uh, fundamentally consolidate the respective industries and provide an insane layer of convenience. So we hope to do something similar to the travel industry in that we want to kind of uh, consolidate the fragmented industry, the, the various uh, different travel providers, and then provide a amazing layer of uh, convenience in the, in the form of um, selecting and booking your travel. Um, awesome. So the way we do that is we piece together literally all possible modes of transportation, whether that's air, rail, bus, uh, airport shuttle, um, public transit, walking, driving directions even. And then we uh, piece all that together and provide that to users for free in a, a comparable door-to-door -door itinerary format. And so, you know, hopefully gone are the days where uh, you have multiple windows open, <laughs> where you have no idea how much an entire door-to-door -door trip costs. Mm -hmm. And so we're just trying to improve the way people plan travel. This is great. I can't believe no one has been able to kind of think about doing this before. And I know for a fact, like, every time I try and book travel, it takes almost an entire day. Oh, yeah. And um, I just really don't want to ever go through that again. So this sounds like an awesome idea. Thank you. So what have your users been saying that you've been testing with so far? So we've been, uh, we're beta testing right now. We're okay. still pretty early. Awesome. Um, and we've had a lot of users uh, from the Northeast tell us that they really like the consolidation piece because mm -hmm. they do mm -hmm. agree that there's so many windows that are open in their uh, browser when they <laughs> plan travel. Um, and they also like the fact that we're... Um, providing an easy way to kind of book trips. Mm, um, it mm -hmm. just cuts down the entire time to plan travel. I think being able to see how much everything costs, like you said, like all at once is super important as well. It's amazing how all of those little bits of tax and like checked baggage and everything adds up and then all of a sudden you're about like two to three hundred dollars of a budget for a trip. Right. I mean what's amazing is people will uh, spend an inordinate amount of time trying to optimize that intercity segment, mm, but mm -hmm. then they take a taxi to that uh, area and just kind of blow the entire savings right there. Yeah, exactly. So if they had a holistic planning from beforehand, I think they'd be, uh, a, uh, be, be able to plan a more, more optimized trip. Well, I would definitely be making use of your service now that I know yes. it exists. And um, what's next for Macho? So we're looking at, again, we're at beta, um, beta testing right now, but we're looking into um, regional expansion pretty soon. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're continuing to build partnerships with travel providers. Awesome. Oh, I bet that's going to be fun. Yeah. So um, if people want to use your service, it'll be beta testers or just like find out more. Uh, if you go to a website and some contact details. Sure. So um, our URL is travelmacho.com. And on the bottom of the page, you can find our contact info, and we'll, we'll respond with very quickly. <laughs> Excellent. Nice <laughs> and easy. Thank you. Thanks. And unfortunately, Rachel couldn't be here tonight, but we have um, Rachel as well from Madely, and that's M-A-I-D dot L. Why? which is really awesome. Um, a lot of people in the Ogden use this service. It's basically a very easy housekeeping service that you can book in two minutes from your laptop or your mobile phone. Um, it's great when you go on a website, um, like I checked out the Maidley website, and you see all of the testimonials are from people that you know. So there's a lot of locals in Vegas that are already using the service, and it, it gives me sort of a, a greater kind of faith in the service too. So I'll be booking them soon to clean my house. Um, another cool thing about this service is they have clear and upfront pricing. So there's nothing worse than um, sort of ringing up cleaners when you couldn't find pricing on the website and then they're a little woolly about it and then you find out later on that it's $100 more than you were expecting it to be. So what Maidly does is it, it provides up front a, um, just a flat fee for each cleaner and it gives you an estimation of how many hours you'll need those cleaners for and it's super easy to book it. You don't have to call anyone. You can just do it on the website really fast. So Maidly is really cool too and I'm really excited to see where they go. Um, and you can look them up. You can contact Rachel at made.ly um, or you can go to uh, made.ly for more information on that too.
So please join me in congratulating Danny, Kevin, and Rachel on coming out of Progression Labs and ready to take the companies further. Progression Labs, um, they are progressionlabs.com. But before we close out this segment, we're going to cross to our fortune bearer to start our fortune of the week through the audience. Have we got Dylan? Yeah, thank you, Susan. Your fortune bearer is here, and I am here in the back of the audience. I'm going to ask you if you could start by holding up this peanut flag for everybody to see. So this is our sacred peanut flag. It's going to have a message in it that as it travels down this row, and it's going to zigzag its way back to that corner, that's going to travel with it. And that message is going to start as what's inside this sacred fortune cookie. So if you guys played the telephone game back in elementary school, we're taking it to a new level. And it's gonna predict how the week goes. So I'm gonna hand this to you. I want you to open it and read it and then hand it back to me, but don't tell me. I want you to whisper it. What's your, Sean? Yeah, Sean, okay. So I want you to whisper it to Sean, and Sean, you'll whisper it across the way. And we try to keep this thing the same, but of course the community sometimes has an impact in it, so we'll see what happens at the very end. <laughs> I'm ready, go ahead, and you can eat that fortune cookie too. <laughs> All right, go ahead, whisper it to him, and then pass it down. Okay, thanks, Susan. We're thanks, good Dylan. Woo! So, message is on its way. And you are, you are not wasting your energy because this next guest is going to absolutely blow your mind. She is one of eight people who spent two years sealed in a tiny artificial world known as Biosphere 2. Now, oh, oh, and that's just the beginning of it. We're going to keep moving up from there. After we closed that, the doors in here this evening, by the way. There's no getting out. We're here for two years, everyone. <laughs> Hope you like your beats, whatever we can make. So after leaving Biosphere 2, she founded, co-founded Paragon Space Development Corporation. Now, that company develops technologies for extreme environments, such as going into space, such as yep. going deep underwater. And you co-founded it with Tabor McCollum, who's now your husband. Yes. And you actually met him inside your two-year experience in a bubble. Of course, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but it's going strong. So yeah, so anybody who has dating, if you have dating problems, it's a solution that works for one. So we can try again. Um, and then in 2009, she was also named Female Entrepreneur of the Year by the NAFE. And today she is here to talk to us about our chances of going into space. So she is now going to talk a little bit about Worldview Enterprises, and we're going to talk a little bit about uh, a number of things. But the main thing is that this new company is going to give regular people like us, except with a lot more money, the chance, <laughs> the chance to go into space. But so for that rich guy in the audience, this one's for you. Please give it up for Jane Pointer. Thank you very much for coming out. The space music, yeah. Have you thought about the soundtrack for being in space? Have you thought about what music you want to play for them while they're up there? Oh, uh, wow, that's a really awesome question. So um, <laughs> I was talking with Mark Kelly, who's also uh, involved in this, astronaut Mark Kelly, and he was talking about the power of music. And, and uh, one of the most powerful experiences he had on the biosphere, uh, up in the station uh, emotionally, was when they were pulling away from the International Space Station. And the shuttle kind of does this whole beautiful arcing away from it. And they turned on the Space Odyssey music oh, and, and, said, and it was coming. just the most incredible thing so <laughs> yeah yeah well i mean i mean you know like what you think will change in people's brains when they see the blue marble from well so what i could talk about it was what my experience was when i was inside biosphere too so i can okay. talk about that personally which is from a completely different vantage point but i think that it kind of gets it 
at the same experience. So, you know, you're stuck inside this biosphere for two years, and you are completely reliant on your biosphere for your life support system, and it's incredibly literal, your connection to your biosphere. So as I'm breathing out, I'm breathing CO2 into the plants that are growing to provide my food, and we ate so many sweet potatoes that we turned orange, so we were literally coming part sweet potato, visibly. Um, but that connection to the biosphere that I lived in and, and relied on just completely changed my relationship to the biosphere that I live in. You know, the, the biosphere out here is so big, it's a leap of imagination. Right. to think that we're part of it, right? So it really did transform my view of this it world, the world that we live in. Right? It made the world sort of... It, it, it makes you appreciate that this world we live in it is fallible, that, that, that we as a species can make an enormous impact. And of course now it's incredibly obvious that we are, but right. back when we were in the biosphere in the 90s, there was still enormous debate about, you know, my God, it's hubris to think the humans are having you know, right, global right. impact, what kind of right? Impact could we have? Right, exactly. We're only billions. But but I was I was inside Biosphere Two, really experiencing that on a day to day in a in a micro fashion, and so now you you take yourself out, and and that was looking at the biosphere we live in from the inside out. Right. in essence, right? But whereas astronauts, when they're up in space, they're now getting the completely the opposite extreme experience. They're looking at this incredible world and this biosphere we live in from the outside in. So right. they're getting that sort of overview effect. I guess. Of this this is your next challenge. World. You're like, I've seen the, I've seen the small yeah, one. Now, I've now I want to see yeah. the big one. Right, I want right. to see the big one from the outside. Yeah. Right. So, and so when you speak to astronauts about this amazing experience of seeing the world, I mean, they really do talk about it like this amazing transformative experience. I, and that's that's what I hope that we can really deliver to people when they go up on this. No, that's, I mean, so, well, so real quick, when when I did that intro, and you were like thinking about the time you lived in the biosphere and the company you built, is it seems surreal? Like, do you, are you connected to your history? <laughs> how did it transform you? Like, what do you think the lesson was that you could at least share the end, the end of the story with us? Golly, how how do I even begin? I mean, is it in the nuances of your whole life? Like, do you tackle challenges the same way? Well, so for or one thing, it? going inside Biosphere Two is a little bit like having two years of therapy. Oh, okay. <laughs> so you're, you, it is, I have never been in a monastery, but you're imagine a, you're this. A so, no, but, so okay. imagine this. So you are thrust, into, so here we are, you know, every life we are, particularly here, you know, there is so much impressions that hit us moment by moment, right? Okay. You know, everything that's around us. Now throw yourself into the biosphere. The only thing I had to worry about on a day to day and carry around day to day was a pair of pruning shears and a two way radio. And then I was, you know, shoveling potatoes. So, I mean, it's incredibly simple life. And so that strips away everything that distracts you from all this stuff oh, yeah. going on side in your, inside your the head. So well, you're kind of left with everything that's yammering on inside your head. So sooner or later, get, you, you have control? to deal with it. I mean, did you, so you got control of them. Oh, God, no. We completely acted out. Oh, we okay. were terrible. <laughs> we were awful. We were just really heinous. Um, so, uh, it, it, of course, to some degree, yes. I mean, it yeah. really thrust it in my face. I mean, at one point, I thought I was going a little bit mad. I mean, it turns out that there is a whole constellation of things that happen to people when they go into isolated, confined environments. That's right. what it's called. It's the whole branch of psychology. And, you know, you go really a bit batty. And so at one point, I thought I was going so mad that I actually got myself a professional psychologist to help me because I just, I, I, yeah. I was like, help. I would have had one before going in. Yeah, well, you would have think we yeah. would have, right? You would have thought we should have. Yes, indeed. I think we probably should have. It would have been wise, I think. So, so did, when, when your thoughts are clear, is it abundance of creativity? Like, tell me about like the sweet potato you were eating in the middle. <laughs> the, like the entire, like one year in, you're sitting there eating sweet potatoes. Like, what, what was your thoughts like at that moment? I hate everyone. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, I mean, I, I'm joking. It, 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 it really did go from, you know, just, I mean, probably the same kinds of things as we all do. I mean, you're yeah. probably wanting me to say, oh, it was this incredible yeah. Zen moment, and my well, mind I mean, was as clear. As you got out of there, you started a big company. I don't company, think my so. mind does that, so gotcha. other okay. people might yeah. have had that experience. I hope it's <laughs> okay, well, so, so let's talk about uh, you meet your husband, you guys start this company. Why did you want to do Paragon? What made that? Oh, yeah, so when we were inside the biosphere, so you might think of the biosphere in some sense as one of the very first commercial space flight companies okay. because it was a prototype space base. 
Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, so it was a NASA budget? It was, it was not. Space? It okay. was completely privately funded, but it oh, was intended to be that. a prototype space base. So it would be as if we were on Mars and we had this amazing biosphere on Mars. Yeah, that was the fair. fantasy I was living out inside the biosphere in a way, right? I that would sit still, on the that's beach. Not, it could still happen, right? Yeah, right, of course. Yeah. And I would sit on the yeah. beach and there was this incredible space frame. <laughs> I mean, it was like, you know, a, a, an amazing sci fi movie. It was like, you know, silent running. I would sit there. And I'd look out through this amazing glass and steel structure. Yeah. And you know, there were the mountains outside, and you couldn't see anything else. And at night, it was for all the world. We were on Mars. Yeah, yeah it was just it was an amazing thing. So we were in the oh, biosphere. That is to think about. Yeah, and so we were in the biosphere, and we're like, okay, so what are we gonna do after this? And we're like, well, you know, we're pretending to be on Mars, so why don't we actually try and actually go to Mars? <laughs> so we started this company, not with the idea necessarily, we weren't quite so audacious to think that we would. We, I think at the time, I assumed that it was, even though I was a great proponent and always have been my entire adult life, a great proponent of commercial space, I assumed that going to space would have to be a government. Going to Mars would have to be a government program. Oh, and so when did that switch? So, right? well, we've okay. got several programs that are yeah. uh, talking about going to Mars, right? And there's Mars One that is you know, a one-way mission. You can all sign up to go to Mars <laughs> if you want right now on a one-way mission. Um, and so, so that, that's really cool. So that's completely privately funded. I mean, you know, they've got enormous challenges to go from here to there, but right. by no means a slam dunk. But nonetheless, it is a private group thinking about going to space. And then there's Inspiration Mars, which is another nonprofit. It's a nonprofit endeavor um, that is attempting to go to Mars. So, so Paragon was about trying to do a lot of the life support systems and, and all of that right. that, would, that would get so us to Mars. Yes, it, exactly. Work, That's exactly right. Yeah. OK, so let's talk about uh, Worldview Enterprises. So um, if you could talk through a couple of these slides, it'd be great. Um, so basically, this is what you want. Our rich friends to get into. Right? Yeah, yeah. So, so, so this is the view, right? So you're, you're, you go up. It takes you about an hour and a half to get up to this altitude, and you're, for all intents and purposes, in space. You're above 99% of the atmosphere, so the sky is completely black. You're going to just have this most mind-boggling view of the heavens, and then the sun rises, and the sun is going to come over this beautifully curved horizon, and now you're going to start seeing that, you know, where the, right, the, the day and Encroaching. Yes, of course, lights, exactly, yeah, lights, exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and the day starts encroaching on the night below you. And so you're in this completely sealed capsule. And maybe you're sitting there drinking your martini or a cup of coffee or whatever it is that's your favorite beverage of choice, looking out at this incredible spectacle. And above you is this enormous balloon. And, and so here is a balloon, and it's about the size of a football field. Okay. So it's ginormous. This is 15 million cubic feet that is taking you up there. Wow. And so you, you are up there for a couple of hours. And then um, as you start coming back down, uh, you begin to descend. And then this here is, it really turns the whole capsule into a glider. So it's a parawing. So it's a, it's a, it's a parachute that you can steer. And it's out all the time. And so as you start coming back down, you let go of the balloon. And now you've turned into a glider. And you can steer it. And you just steer this thing all the way back down to your landing site. And then, so do the, they separate? And eventually yes, you they okay, separate. And then, and then go, this has to come back. This yes, this comes back down place. under its own guidance system. And, and we go and retreat it. Gotcha. Yeah. Wow, that's going to be. And so uh, where did these launch from? How many people do you think? Yeah, so like, inside of it uh, is going to be six passengers, two crew. Yeah. Um, of course, the pilot, because you actually steer the thing. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah I don't want to go yeah. without a pilot. That's no, scary. you're, you're yeah. going to need a pilot. <laughs> uh, and um, so we're looking at a number of different launch sites. We probably will have several. We're making it very flexible to, for uh, where we can launch from. One of them is, is that we're looking at is Page, Arizona. That's not too far from here. We're also right. looking at other sites in, um, in Nevada and then in New Mexico. There's, there's a number of different sites. Mm. That, that we're looking at. This is yeah, it's just absolutely incredible. I've done this vacation before, and nobody's done that experience. So, I mean, it'll truly be mind blowing when it when it gets up and running. And you're hoping 2000. End of 2016. 2016, yes. It's not yeah. too long from now. Okay, so um, certainly people can check out the website. They could follow Twitter. But what other calls to action would you say to people if they want to just learn more about the project? Yeah, go to worldviewexperience.com. We haven't quite got all of our social media up, but we will actually in the next couple of weeks. Okay. Yep. And uh, there'll be lots to find out about. We've got some really fun test flights coming up, and we'll be sending information out about that. So that's going to be really fun. That is, yeah. I just 
can't even imagine. I mean, you, you, must, you must have you must be able to close your eyes. Can you close your eyes and just see the whole thing right now? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I bet. That's... I don't have to close my eyes. It's there in front of me all the time. <laughs> I mean. I, I'm just going. <laughs> we're, we're just going to make this happen through a force of will. Oh, that's awesome. Okay. Well, thank you very much for coming out. We get a big round of applause for it. Thank you very much. Learn more. You go on and on. That's really Pick one up, subscribe to me on YouTube, follow on Twitter, all that happy stuff. So every day is a holiday, like I said. For example, today is February 20th, and it's National Love Your Pets Day! Love your pets! What's up? Does anybody have any unique pets? Any, anything I should know about? And no one? Oh, a hedgehog, nice! Uh, if, if you're on YouTube, comment down below. I want to hear about your crazy ass pets. So, February is not unlike all other months. There's a lot of holidays in regard to your health. For example, February is National Healthy Heart Month. It is National Fiber Focus Month, which is really good for the pooping. Who likes to poop? Yeah, sure you could. Yeah, yes, yes. It's also uh, National, National Wise Consumer Health Month. Now, I don't know about you guys. When I think about health and healthy restaurants and gluten-free eating, I get kind of bored. And I'm thinking it's not tasty. What do you guys think? Would, when you hear gluten free and healthy, are you thinking it's tasty? Yeah. A round of applause, I want to hear. Yeah. Oh, see? Okay, that's what I'm saying. But surprise, 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 there's a restaurant downstairs. What's it called? Wild! Yeah, Wild. This is the GM of Wild. Her name is Elise. You're a free beer sponsor. <laughs> the whole notion in the face about healthy and not tasting very good. Tell us, the what of, of wild? Sure, so we are a completely gluten-free um, kitchen and we do pizzas and pastas and pastries that actually taste good and are gluten-free, so when you think gluten-free and you think cardboard, we're completely the opposite. Mm, nice. Uh, February uh, is National Snack Food Month and when I hear snack food, I'm not thinking gluten-free, but you guys have a comfort food bar menu that that kind of destroys that, so talk to me. We do, we have five items for $5 each, and we have spinach, uh, vegan spinach dip, we have a half margarita pizza, we do lettuce, uh, little lettuce wraps, nachos, and they're all they're all healthy. Um, they don't look like they're healthy because they're still nachos and spin dip, but they're made with clean ingredients and really good for you still. Clean ingredients, who likes that? Yeah. I mean, come on. So, um, in a couple of days, in a couple of days, it's February 26th, which happens to be National Personal Chef's Day. I mean, who wouldn't love a personal chef, right? Especially if you have a gluten-free lifestyle, that can be complicated. But you guys, for me, are like my own personal chef. You make it easy. So, and, and you guys will modify things. Ooh, what happened? I can edit it. Yeah. So, let's do it again. Good idea. So, uh, February 26th, in a couple of days, happens Woo! to be National Personal Chef's Day. Who wishes they had their own personal chef, right? <laughs> so, uh, when I think of a, like a gluten-free diet, that can be a bit challenging to do on your own, but you guys make it easy, and you'll like modify things for the guests, which is crazy. Tell me. Absolutely. So anything that's on our menu, for the most part, we can modify to your liking. So we do um, we do different kinds of meats, and we do different cheeses, vegan cheese options. So we can take anything and pretty much modify it to what you enjoy and still mm. tastes good. That's what, I don't know if you guys know chefs at restaurants, but there are these artistic, maniacal, temperamental, crazy fucks. Can I say that? Is that okay? <laughs> they really are. They'll basically be like, would you tell an artist what color to put in his painting? Don't fuck with my food, right? That's how they are. But you guys let the guests fuck with the food. Absolutely. That's amazing. We do. So, I don't, okay, so they have, they have a happy hour, a happy hour every day from 4 to 7. You have to go. It's awesome. And they normally close at 10 o'clock at night. But guess what? Tonight, for us only, they're staying open until midnight. <laughs> Right down 
downstairs, so you have no excuse not to go. And they're also offering their happy hour bar food menu for us tonight. I mean, that's amazing. That's very sweet. So thank you so much. My pleasure. Yes. Uh, again, I'm Matt Holiday of Holiday One TV. This is Elise from Royal. Happy Holidays! <laughs> Okay, so when Danny agreed to be on the show tonight, little did he expect he was also going to be holding the peanut flag at the end of the show. So you actually had the fortune told to you and you were the last person. So I'm going to get you to repeat to me what the fortune for Vegas Tech downtown is for the week. This was 10 minutes ago, but I think it was, don't be a tuna, life is beautiful. <laughs> Don't be a tuna, life is beautiful. That's your final answer. It's, I got nothing on that. <laughs> I got nothing. I always try and interpret them, and I can't do that one. Life is beautiful, though, and uh, I don't think I'd want to be a tuna because they end up in tin cans, and then we eat them. This is true. Yeah. OK, I'm going to tell you what the actual fortune was. The actual fortune was do not be too timid. <laughs> And squeamish about your actions. All life is an experiment. So pretty close. So pretty close, yeah. <laughs> All right, now before we close out, Danny, do you have a Twitter account that people can follow? I do. It's uh, at Travel Macho. At Travel Macho. So make sure you follow Danny. And thanks for being a great sport and being on the show twice. <laughs> Thank you. Tag.